Hello, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and this is Short Time True Crime. Yes, I changed the name. You guys really seemed to like that on the last video. I mentioned changing the name and you guys were like, yeah, 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 like I like it. It's a good name. I like it. So I've officially changed it. This is a Short Time True Crime. My videos are pretty short, straight to the point. So that's why I decided to change the name. Also, if you guys can try to focus on the story and not my gleaming red face that would be great <laughs> i'm so sunburnt Ugh. okay but that's not what this is about today we are talking about gabe and tina watson this is an extremely controversial case some people believe that gabe is guilty some people believe that he is not so let's dive into the case and you guys please tell me in the comments what you think Tina Watson was born in West Germany on February 13th, 1977, and she was legally adopted by Tommy and Cindy Thomas while she was still just a baby and moved to Birmingham, Alabama. Now, Tina was diagnosed with PSVT, which is a heart condition where your heart races really, really fast from time to time. You know, you have a shortness of breath, sweaty, um, dizziness, things like that. I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that medically, but that's what um, I was able to pretty much come up with. Now, when Tina was 24, she had a minor surgery to try to fix the issue because she took a lot of different medications for it and nothing really worked. So she had a minor surgery to fix the issue and she then attended the University of Alabama where she met her future husband, Gabe Watson. And in 2001, they began dating. Now, Gabe was a lover of scuba diving and he was actually a certified rescue diver. So even though it was medically like not recommended for Tina to go on dives. She took some diving lessons and she did this because she just loved Gabe and she wanted to do things that he enjoyed and spend more time with him. So she was willing to make that sacrifice. Eventually Gabe proposed and of course Tina said yes and they got married on October 11th, 2003. And they planned a pretty amazing honeymoon in Australia. And of course one of the events that they would be participating in was a scuba dive and this scuba trip was at the Great Barrier Reef and now this dive was considered like a really difficult dive. So they were going to be exploring a shipwreck that happened in 1911. So I mean it sounds really really amazing super super interesting but it was a much more difficult and advanced dive. At this time Gabe actually had almost 60 dives under his belt and Tina only had five so she was way 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 less experienced than Gabe but she felt safe because not only was Gabe her husband she loved him she trusted him he was a certified rescue diver so if anything happened she knew that Gabe would be there to make things right and to rescue her like he's supposed to do. I don't really know why Tina was even allowed to be a part of this dive knowing that she had that little experience. Maybe it's just because she was with Gabe and he was able to talk them into letting her go. Maybe they lied. I don't really know but she participated in this dive with Gabe. Now with this being a super difficult dive there was supposed to be a guided certified diver to go down with everyone but Gabe refused to let the guy come with them and he said he didn't need anybody because he was just this fantastic certified rescue diver he did not need the help of anybody else so he sounds extremely narcissistic let's just go ahead and throw that out there but that's that's just my opinion so within like two minutes of this dive like they were down there no time at all Gabe claims that Tina gave him a look of absolute terror and was signaling something to him when she accidentally knocked Gabe's mask and air regulator loose. So he's panicking and he's struggling with his gear trying to get everything fixed and when he's able to see again he sees that Tina is sinking extremely fast to the ocean floor. So Gabe being an experienced rescue diver he swims down to rescue his wife, right? Wrong. Gabe swims to the surface to get help like, well, I, I thought you were this experienced, incredibly amazing, fantastic rescue diver. Why are you not getting down there to rescue your wife that you see is sinking extremely fast, 98 feet to the ocean floor? So when Gabe gets to the surface, he calls for a guy named Wade and he is one of the rescue divers. So Wade dives down, finds Tina, and she had been underwater at this point for 10 minutes. So... I don't know what the heck Gabe was doing. I guess he was just lollygagging around trying to just 
take in the sights and swim very slowly to the surface to let everybody know that his wife is sinking to the bottom of the ocean. But this guy Wade, he is able to get Tina to the surface and puts her on a separate boat where he performs CPR for around 40 minutes. Now, of course, people are asking Gabe, like, what the heck, dude? Why didn't you go and get your wife? And his response that, that he was never trained, quote, how to get somebody back to the surface, even though he claimed he was a certified rescue diver. He also said he had an ear problem that prevented him from diving too far down. And like I said, Tina was 98 feet down. So I'm sorry, but if my husband and I were diving and I'm experienced and I'm certified in all this stuff and I see that my husband is sinking, I don't care if my ear explodes, okay? I'm gonna go rescue my husband. Maybe that's just me. So here's something else that's odd. There's a lot, but I'm gonna start with this one, okay? So Tina is on one boat over here and someone is performing CPR on her. Gabe is on another boat over here and he never goes to the boat where Tina is to check on her. He just stays on this boat and he has his head down and he's like making these crying sounds but no tears ever actually come out. Like he's just kind of like whimpering or something, I don't know. Another thing is that other divers who were underwater at the same time Gabe and Tina were, they said that they saw Gabe give Tina what they called a bear hug before kind of like pushing her away and that's when she began sinking. But she didn't just sink slowly like you would probably picture, like in the movies, like when somebody's underwater, they're just kind of like gliding slowly down in the water. No, she is like sinking fast. And Tina's father, he claimed that shortly before the wedding, Gabe asked him to increase Tina's life insurance policy and put Gabe as the sole beneficiary. Now, her father did not do this, thank God. He probably thought that was like really super sketchy, so that didn't happen. But like, we've heard these stories so many times, life insurance policies, that's the motive, the money is the motive. <sighs> Just why? Now back to Tina over on this boat. It's been 40 minutes since CPR was started and unfortunately, despite the best efforts of the rescue team, Tina was unable to be revived. And the following day, Tina's autopsy was performed and her death was ruled as a drowning. Since this was all super unexpected and Gabe was giving really conflicting statements, an investigation was launched by the state coroner's office. And at this point, Gabe had already left Australia and returned to the US. So any statements from Gabe was sent through his lawyer. Like he refused to go back to Australia to give any statements. Now listen, I said there was a lot of odd things that pop up in this case and I wasn't kidding. So during the investigation, police are able to go through Tina and Dave's dive computers, which are like these little devices used by divers that can keep track of things like how much time has passed and how deep the diver is and heart rate and things like that. Now, while searching the dive computers, it's believed that Gabe had actually turned off Tina's air supply while he was giving her that big bear hug. And he held her until she just ran out of oxygen. And then he quickly turned her air supply back on and let her go and kind of pushed her away. And that's where she was sinking. Other divers that witnessed Gabe give Tina this big bear hug, they said her arms were flailing around. So I really think that makes sense. And if that's, if that's the case, if that's really what happened, I can't imagine the fear and the, just all of the emotion that was running through her in those last moments where her husband, she knows at the time that he is holding her and not letting her go and turning off her air supply and then it just goes dark. Now, two years after Tina's death in March of 2005, Gabe actually took legal action to try to regain the cost of their trip because the travel insurance company refused to pay out. So he was trying to get about $45,000 for accidental death, plus compensation for trip and eruption, medical expenses, taxis, airfare, hotel stays, literally everything. And it totaled up to $45,000. Now, thankfully, this was dismissed in 2008. Now, are you ready for something even worse than this if it can keep getting worse but it does unfortunately in 2007 gabe had tina's body exhumed from where she was laid to rest close to her family and moved to another spot that was nowhere near her family and he didn't even tell anybody he told nobody in her family that he was doing this not only this but he left her gravesite unmarked for six years it took until 2009 for gabe to get a foot marker with Tina's name, her birthday, and the date of her passing. Then, 
every time someone from Tina's family, especially her father, would come and put flowers or other items on her gravesite, they would be vandalized or just completely disappear altogether. And it happened so often that Tina's father would chain things down to the gravesite so they couldn't go away. And police set up surveillance to see who the heck was doing this to Tina's gravesite. And I'm sure you can probably guess it was Gabe coming in with bolt cutters whenever things started getting chained down. And he was seen on camera taking things away that her family laid there for her and throwing them in a trash can. After this, Gabe actually remarries a woman named Kim Lewis. And guys, I'm gonna put up a side-by-side -side photo of Gabe and Tina and Gabe and Kim. They are so similar. It is the most eerie thing. It is, it's scary. Finally, in June 2008, Gabe was charged with murder in Australia when he decided to go back and face trial like a big boy. He pleaded not guilty to murder, but guilty to manslaughter which is a lesser sentence. The prosecutor stated that over the years, Gabe gave 16 different statements as to what happened to Tina and not a single one of them matched up with what the witnesses saw. Gabe was sentenced to four and a half years in prison and only served 18 months. Once Gabe was released from Australia, he was deported back to the US where he was immediately arrested again and he faced trial in Alabama because prosecutors said that Gabe planned to his wife while they were still in Alabama before their honeymoon. So now he's facing charges in Alabama as well. However, the judge did not allow Tina's father to provide any evidence about the life insurance thing, where Gabe tried to get Tina's father to up her life insurance policy and add him as a sole beneficiary. Yeah, the judge did not want to hear any of that. Also, all of this behavior coming from Gabe after Tina passed away, all of this weird behavior and things that he was doing, the judge ruled this as inadmissible. One good thing is that in 2011, the probate court removed Gabe as administrator of Tina's estate and appointed her father, and Gabe was also ordered to stay away from Tina's gravesite. Tina's father requested that Gabe return a list of things that belonged to Tina back to her family, but Gabe appealed against this and refused to provide the court with anything. And then on February 23rd, 2012, Gabe was acquitted due to lack of evidence. Like, are, what? There is a mountain of evidence in this case. A mountain of evidence. But he was acquitted. And that's it. Like I said, this is a controversial case. Um, some people think that he's not guilty. Some people believe that he is. I want to know your thoughts down in the comments, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this short time true crime. Stay safe and I will see you next week. Bye!